Welcome to this presentation offered by PT Guru Consulting. My name is Kevin. Today we're going to be talking about measurements, calibration, and measurement uncertainty. So let's dive right in with some learning objectives. Today the first thing we want to talk about is going to be measurement, what we mean by measurement, what it is, what it entails. Then we're going to move into talking about calibration and how that's different and yet the same as measurement. We're going to look at then how accurate is a particular measurement. Um, how good can it be? And how bad could it potentially be? And that'll lead us into measurement uncertainty and what, that, what we mean by measurement uncertainty and what exactly goes into it. And then we'll talk about how we can use measurement uncertainty to determine and make some decisions about a particular tool or item. So we'll get started right off the bat. Measurement, that's the whole thing in a nutshell that we're going to be talking about today is what are we doing with measurement? What's happening? How are things going? So we've all performed measurements. We don't think about it a lot. Um, we might think that because they're not a super precision measurement that it's not an, a measurement, but everything's, um, all these things are measurements. So we look at things like measuring cups that we use in our kitchens, uh, a ruler that you might use uh, like a tape measure too, to measure a board that you're going to use to build a wall. Uh, the speedometer in our car, every time we look down, you're taking a measurement of your car's speed. And then you don't always have to have a number associated to call it a measurement. You look at your fuel gauge and it says uh, halfway full, you go, okay, I got a half a tank of gas. You don't go, oh, I got 6.8 gallons of gas in my car. No, we're looking at uh, how much fuel is in the car from a relative perspective other than rather than assigning an actual number to it. So when we look at how well we can make a measurement, we need to look at the measuring tools we're using in the first place. So for instance, with a measuring cup, it has wide graduations. It needs to be placed on a level surface. Uh, you've got to wait for the liquid inside there to stop sloshing around to be able to read it. Uh, a common way to improve this measurement would be to actually use a scale as opposed to just the measuring cup and use the numbers that we obtain from a scale to measure a liquid volume. So, I mean, should all measurements be as precise as possible? It, it depends. It's a definite maybe kind of question. So it really comes down to what our final product that we're looking for is going to be. So for instance, bakeries typically are going to use scales to do most of their measuring for uh, the ingredients that go into their cakes or their donuts or their pastries. Um, reason being, it's very repeatable. You don't have to have the same person performing the measurements all the time. You've got a lot of factors like that happening where it's just easier to scale that kind of measurement. Now, for home cooks, you guys might eyeball it a little. And you sit there and you measure things using your measure cup. You can, you're going to make pancakes and you go, eh, that batter is a little too thick. Just put a couple more drops of water in there and we'll get it to where it needs to be. Um, but when it comes down to it, you know, all this baking stuff, it really is chemistry. So the measurements we make in baking can be really important. Uh, so it's a good example to use for everybody to try to get their head around the ideas of calibration and measurement uncertainty. So for measurement, we move right into calibration. So what exactly is happening with calibration? Well, we'll start with a quick little story. So you've got the same cake recipe you've used for years. You're, it comes out perfect every time. You've got it down just absolutely to the point where it's right, it's spot on, it's wonderful, it's, you love it, it's just the best thing you've ever tasted. You go over to a friend's house and you try to use your same recipe, comes out perfect every time when you make it, and you use their measuring cups and you use their scale, you didn't pack those to bring them with you, and you bake up this cake and it comes out not quite perfect. How could this possibly happen? Why? What is happening here? Well, this is where calibration is going to come into play. Um, when we look at calibration, we're going to compare these measuring cups or these scales to standards traceable to the International System of Units, abbreviated as the SI. Uh, that's going to give us a much better picture of what the actual measurements are. So your measuring cup itself, it might be reading incorrectly. 
And the thing is, you've used that same measuring cup for all these years to do all those measurements, to make all those cakes, and you would never know it because you're using that same cup every time and it's the same every time. It's not until you went to try to repeat those same measurements in a different place using different tools at a different time that you realize, hey, there's a problem with something. So this is where standardization comes into play. Uh, measurements being made in different places um, that actually are still the same. So we want our measuring cup that says one cup to be a cup here and we want it to be one cup in our friend's kitchen. So, you know, let's say you're sharing your recipe on the internet. It's kind of important if your cups are the same size as other people's cups. Or let's say we're building a house, you know, that's, uh, the two different tape measures that contractors are using, uh, one of them's different than the other for some reason, something was possibly made wrong, uh, that would kind of be a real big problem. Uh, buying food, uh, we go out and we, you know, buy that nice juicy half pound steak, we want a nice juicy half pound steak. We don't want a quarter pound steak, we don't want to play, pay half pound price for a quarter pound of meat. Uh, so that's another real important area where we see these kind of things taking place. And then, you know, Think about this one too, explaining your excessive, excessive speed to the police officer because your th speedometer is reading wrong. So just some ideas of standardization to keep in mind as we talk about these calibration and measurement practices. So standardization is just a really huge thing when we look at the manufacturing world uh, because it's really important they're getting the same measurements everywhere they go through their processes. They don't want to make a product in Des Moines and have it be a different product than the product that they make in West Virginia. Uh, that would be a real big problem to them. So calibration is a way to help ensure that we're getting those standardized measurements in different places at different times. So we, we're talking about measurements. We're talking about the calibration, comparing measurements, what all that means. Um, then, now we've got to talk about how accurate a particular measurement is. So you took and you sent out your instruments. They're in good working order. They've been calibrated. They're, you've got a nice certificate back. It says that they're intolerance, so everything's what they should be. So they must be perfectly accurate, right? Well, Yes and no. There's no such thing as a perfect measurement. All measurements have errors associated with them. These errors can come from a number of different places, but typically the biggest one is going to be the equipment we use to make the measurement, uh, like we saw with our measuring cup versus using a scale a little bit earlier on. Uh, the environment in which the measurement is taking place. Um, maybe you're trying to use that measuring cup on a train. Uh, that motion of the train is going to cause some problems with trying to make that measurement. Uh, the process itself, uh, how are we doing the measurements? Uh, how are we going about it? Is somebody moving way too fast? Is somebody just not looking at things as close as they should be? That could be part of the process issue. And then what is being measured itself? We see here somebody trying to measure a sandwich with a caliper, a little bit problematic because that caliper wants to dig right into that fluffy bread on either side. So and that's another thing to think about is what is the actual physical device that we're measuring. And in metrological speak, we call that the measurement. Um, don't worry, they won't be on the test. No, there isn't a test. But, you know, that's a possible the word that we throw around a bit. So when we look at the actual accuracy, and we'll kind of step back to our uh, measuring cup example here. Uh, we look at some different things that kind of contribute to the overall accuracy or how well we can measure something with this measuring cup. So the first thing that comes into mind is the graduations and you see they're pretty fairly well spaced um, about a quarter cup between each graduation. Um, then if we want to get really particular with things we'll look at the actual thickness of those graduation lines. Is the measurement at the top of that graduation line or is it at the bottom of that graduation line? That's another possible contribution to how accurate we can use this. The 
a lot of other things come out of the process itself of using this to perform measurements. So how level is our kitchen counter that we set this on um, when we go to make a measurement? Uh, do you know how to properly read the meniscus, which is the kind of curvature that water takes where it wants to crawl up the side of a container that it's in? Uh, how stable are the contents in here? Is it splashing all around? Or have you let it sit there for a moment to settle out? And another thing to keep in mind too is the temperature of the contents. If you put ripping hot water straight out of the microwave in this cup, it's going to be bigger in volume than had that water just came out of the refrigerator. Still be the same mass of water in there, but it will be a different volume. So this is kind of where measurement uncertainty comes into play. We're going to look at those potential inaccuracies, those issues with the measurement, and then try to get our head around. So what we're going to do is we want to quantify the potential error associated with a given measurement. We, we really want to come up with how bad could this measurement possibly be? Because that's what we want to know. That's useful data. That's useful information when we actually go to use this measuring cup or ruler or speedometer or gas gauge to know, you know, how much can it be off and still be doing its job properly. So we're, we'll talk about kind of how we go about this. We're not going to get into the math, the actual calculation it takes some statistical stuff, but there's uh, lots of calculators out there for that. Um, I got an up and coming video where I'll be talking about how to use uh, some different Excel templates that I've developed over the years uh, to be able to calculate these measurement uncertainties without having to actually do any calculations other than figuring out what to plug into them. So when we look at measurement uncertainties, kind of mentioned that there's these contributions and then there's a quantity associated with that contribution. So when we looked at the potential measurement issues with using our measuring cup, like the graduation, the resolution, how the distance between the graduations, the thickness of those gradu graduations and the actual use of the measuring cup itself, um, we can then go and try to identify some quantities to associate with that because those quantities that associate with that will then drive what the value of our measurement uncertainty actually is. So in that case, we look at our graduations and they're uh, either a quarter or a third of a cup per graduation. Um, we wanted to figure out what the thickness of those graduations was. Um, so we would measure the actual thickness and determine a volume to associate with the thickness of that line. And then these process contributions, they're a little bit different. What we do here is we want to perform various experiments to try to figure out how much each one of these things is. So we may take and to determine how much could come from a surface that's not level, we may take and take some measurements with the measuring cup and then tilt the table a degree or two in one direction, make some more measurements, tilt it back in another direction, maybe to the left, to the right, to the front, to the back, and see what kind of measurements we're actually getting at that point. Uh, for something like the meniscus, we're just going to do something called a repeatability study. We'll make several measurements of the same quantity of liquid in the measuring cup and be able to say, hey, uh, this is how well I can read the meniscus. This is how well I can, I'm repeating this particular measurement. Uh, the stability of the contents, um, you may want to work on that from a procedural side, or you may find that you know, you're constantly measuring in an environment where there's vibration present, and you may be able to do some kind of study that determines how much that vibration is affecting the actual liquid level, and then the temperature of the contents as well. Uh, how stable is that temperature? Um, is it changing frequently, dramatically, or is it pretty much the same all the time? These are all just things to consider. So what we look at then is quantifying these contributions. And the biggest thing here to keep in mind is that we want to make sure that they're all in the same unit. So when we look at something like temperature, um, obviously that's going to affect the measurement that we're talking about with your measuring cup. Um, so we may say that your kitchen is going to vary by plus or minus 10 degrees Fahrenheit. That's great, but how does 10 degrees Fahrenheit affect 
one cup of water. How does it affect your ability to measure one cup of water using a measuring cup? So that's where, that's where it gets a little more complicated, takes a little more time. Uh, we can do these things empirically. Uh, there's plenty of formulas to show you what the change in volume is over temperature for different materials like water or other liquids or we can actually do them empirically and make measurements that say okay this is water at 60 degrees Fahrenheit and it weighs this much and this is water at 80 degrees Fahrenheit and it weighs this much and that's the biggest variation I can see based upon the temperature swing in my kitchen so it doesn't really matter how you get to the answer there's lots of choices in that uh, but we just need to get to the answer and come up with the number that says this is how much this could possibly affect this measurement. So it's good to know hard part is done. Uh, once you've quantified everything that is by far the hardest most time consuming part of creating a measurement uncertainty for any measurement instrument because once you've quantified all of those they get plugged into a formula off they go. Um, I did mention upcoming videos coming on in Excel to use some basic statistical calculators and do some basic statistic um, evaluation of measurement uncertainty. Um, easier than you think once you understand how to use the tools. So fun stuff. Um, so for this particular measuring cup, I can tell you if you use the strictest interpretation of gum uncertainty, you'd be looking at an uncertainty right around an eighth of a cup. Now, if you could empirically prove um, that you could repeatedly measure between the lines on this cup, then your measurement uncertainty would improve to about half whatever that between the line measurement you felt like you could make was and could prove you could make was. So it's kind of one of the things that we fight about uh, when we talk about measurement uncertainties is some of these things where we maybe read things a little bit further than what is seen as the strictest interpretation of certain guidelines and standards. So we've done all this work to figure out what could go into errors in a measurement. We've figured out the math. We've done all these things, worked really hard at really pinpointing how big of a number is associated with this measurement uncertainty issue. So how are we going to go about using that actual number? It's because in calibration world, um, uncertainty gets passed from one measurement to the next. So if I want to measure a quantity using your measuring cup of one cup and associated an uncertainty with an eighth of a cup with it, and I had that volume of liquid, I cannot know the volume of that liquid to be any better than an eighth, one cup plus or minus an eighth of a cup of liquid. So it's that gets passed down the chain of custody here as we talk about making measurements one after another and after another. So if we're making an, a measurement that just provides an end product, that measurement uncertainty may not be all that important. However, if we're then transferring those measurements, now it becomes important to look at that measurement uncertainty and how it procreates throughout a chain of measurements being made. So the other thing to think about with measurement uncertainty, and especially at the end user level kind of things, is it's a really good way to determine if a measurement tool is appropriate for a particular task. So in the case of our measuring cup here, an eighth of a cup plus or minus an eighth of a cup might be accurate enough to do your job. If you're trying to make pancakes, it probably is going to do just fine for what you're using it for. Uh, if you're trying to make pharmaceutical products it's probably not going to be accurate enough to do the job you're trying to do so it's just a matter of what fits the job you're trying to do so this has been kind of a brief presentation on measurement calibration measurement uncertainty uh, thanks for watching I got plenty of videos to come stop by check me out on www.ptguruconsulting.com thanks